Never do these 18 things on a date. Number one, don't ask her what she wants to do for the date. As a man, you got to be the leader. Now, leadership does not mean that you tell her what to do, whether she likes it or not, but it means being proactive. It means suggesting a concrete time and place. Obviously, this whole idea of leadership goes way deeper, but in the initial stage of the date, you at least have to make a concrete suggestion. So just say to her, let's meet on Thursday, 7 p.m. at. Obviously, there's the soft close beforehand where you want to say, let's meet for drinks one of these days. Then she says, great. Then you can say, cool, let's do 7 p.m. on Thursday at bar XYZ question mark. You have to do that. Very important. Don't push the burden of leadership or proactivity onto her. She'll resent you for it. She really will. Because women feel most comfortable when they're in their feminine. Number two, you don't need the date to go well. It's very important. Don't need the date to go well. If you feel a sense of urgency that this has to go well, maybe because you've only had two or three dates in the last six months, well, then evidently you'll be more in the you'll be coming more so from a place of scarcity, but she will feel it. If she feels that you don't need this day to go well, that you want her, but that you really don't need it, it'll immediately build attraction. Number three, never arrive on the date without being in social flow. Let's say you're in a taxi, you're in an Uber, and you're going to the date. Call a friend. Hey, Stephen, what's going on? Guess what? You'll never believe what happened. And you use your friend to talk yourself into social flow. It makes a big difference. You can't expect yourself to be doing very cerebral activities on a laptop for hours and hours on end and then arrive on the date and be totally verbally agile. There's a degree of flow. Even with me, when I'm shooting this video, you'll probably see that I'm more in flow towards the end of the video than at the very beginning. Even though I've done hundreds and hundreds of them, right, 2,000 videos on TikTok, hundreds of short form videos on Instagram, hundreds and hundreds of long form videos on YouTube. Even in my case, it is still true that momentum takes place. Now, obviously, there's something like macro momentum, We've discussed that at length in terms of going out, meeting women, and trying to make that a habit. Every time you see somebody, several times a week, you want to introduce yourself to people, even if you're just having a conversation between the person uh, behind the cash register or registrar, however you say, the person at the reception of the hotel. You use these moments to add a little bit of positivity to that person's life, as well as to your own life, and get yourself into flow. That's macro momentum, but in the micro, it's also true. In the day, or on the day itself, you need to have rituals that put you into flow. Because otherwise you can't possibly expect yourself to be verbally agile. Obviously there's storytelling techniques, there's a lot of strategies to develop that skill set, applying for a free initial consultation call if you want to learn all about that in detail. But it's super important that on the day, call your friend on the way to the date. It's a very, very powerful strategy. Next, never do dinner. Can I have the water, babe? Thank you for the first date. It's very important. Now, could you do dinner as a first date? Absolutely. Of course. I was looking for the screw, but it wasn't there. <laughs> you can absolutely do dinner if your communication skills are excellent. But what you have to understand is eating isn't the most attractive activity in and of itself. You want to burp, but you can't. You may be concerned that you have a little bit of bread in your beard. You know, it's just got a stain on your suit or your shirt. You don't want that. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason you don't want to do dinner, another reason you don't want to do dinner is because this whole idea of paying an investment comes up. It can be considered an overinvestment and there'll be plenty of women who will want to use you just for the free lunch, so to speak. And then you get to remind them of what Adam Smith said. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Because I believe, as a man, it's your responsibility to pay for the drinks. Absolutely. But don't go for dinner. Don't bring her to an expensive place. The right women won't expect that anyway. The women who say, I'll only do dinner as a first date, they're not interested in getting to know you anyway. They're interested in the nutritional aspect of the meetup, more so than getting to know you as a man and seeing whether there's potential for a long-term relationship. So... Two drinks, not dinner. Next, never talk about other men. Don't do it. 
if you talk about other men, the probability is very high that one of the following two things happens. Either you put them above yourself and you look up to them, or you trash talk them and you're looking down on them, which either is gonna make you come across as arrogant, negative, or try hard. So just avoid talking about other men. You are the main character of this date. Next one, never flatline the communication. Learn to communicate at the level of emotion and not logic. Remember to include emotional spikes. Never just talk about the story in and of itself. Relate the story to you and her. Next, never talk about women you've dated. Well, you can mention, yeah, my ex-girlfriend, she was this. In a brief side sentence to add it, but in general, I would avoid, I would avoid conversations about your exes or people you've dated in the past or your ex-wife or whatever the case may be. Now, if she brings up her ex, I've talked about that at length in various Instagram reels, but it's a very, very simple de way to deal with that. If she brings up her ex, you simply say, okay, cool, and you move on. You say, okay, cool. Anyway, remember how we were talking about bananas in Madagascar <laughs> or whatever, right? You say, she brings up her ex, she says, ah, my ex-boyfriend, da 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 Oh, you did, I, let's say, I tell her, I did karate. Oh, my ex-boyfriend, he also did karate. Okay, cool. Anyway, so what are you gonna do next week? Anyway, so, and you just blatantly change the subject and she'll get the message. You don't have to go into it. You don't have to get angry. You just say, okay, cool. Anyway, and you move on. You don't entertain the idea of talking about exes. Now, this kind of goes into this whole subject of congruence tests because every woman will test you. No matter how potentially compatible you are, she will still test you. That being said, women who aren't right for you, they will present you with an unusually and inappropriately high amount of congruence tests. Very important to keep in mind. Next one, never try to impress her. How can I impress her? You're not supposed to try to impress her. You're supposed to try to impress yourself. Self-amusement. Don't go to the date asking yourself, what could I possibly do to get this woman? What can I possibly do to, to impress her? It's the wrong mindset. The more you try and impress her, the less impressed she will actually be. Because she, what she wants is a man who validates his own existence. She wants a man who is satisfied with himself, who validates his own spoken word. Now, that is not to say that you shouldn't be trying to give her a good experience. Obviously, you should try to give her the best experience possible, of course, but you're already a nice guy. You're already a kind man. These are just the types of people who come to me. They're naturally nice and naturally kind. There are some people in this world who need to work on their empathy a little bit. You don't lack empathy. That's not the challenge you have. The challenge you have is being a little bit too concerned with what people think of you. Oh, what are they gonna think of me? And the more you care about that, the more you limit your own freedom of expression. Obviously, you want to care about what people think of you to an extent, because otherwise you'll be sent into exile. You won't be a functioning member of society. Of course, you want to care about what people think of you to an extent and in the right context. For example, do I care about what Fernanda thinks of me, my close friends, my family members? Of course, I care whether they think I'm a good and moral person or not. Am I a kind person? Do they think that? Obviously, I care. Now, do I need them to approve of every decision I make? Absolutely not. And that's very important to keep in mind. Let me ask you this. If your knee was broken, would you let your friend perform knee surgery on you? No. Why not? Your friend has two knees, doesn't he? So surely he must know a thing or two about knees. Well, that's not really how it works. Oh, is it not? Okay. Now, why is it that everybody wants to give you dating and relationship advice or advice for other areas in your life as well, your career, your business? Why should they know what's right for you in terms of your dating and your relationship life? They don't just because they've had a couple of dates. Look, I've had, I don't know how many thousands of coaching conversations over the years. I've helped men from 30 countries, clients from 30 countries find the right girlfriend, life partner, wife, or just get a better social life in general. I'm, I've not only had a ridiculous amount of experience myself, but I, in German we have something called the Draufsicht. I can look 
onto the matrix, onto all these situations of my clients. And I can see the patterns over and over again. And I can tell you that as unique as you are as a person, and you are, and your situation is individual, there are certain patterns that are over, that are always the same. But the important thing is you should care about my opinion only in the area of dating. Don't ask me for advice on how to fix your car. I'm a very bad German. Don't ask my opinion on football. I'm a bad German. I don't know anything about that. It's not my area of expertise. And people usually only have one area of expertise. And the second they step outside of that, they're fools. We're all fools in most areas in life. It's actually quite enlightening to think about that because it's nice to not have to know everything. You just have to have one area of expertise. That being said, care about whether the people closest to you think you're a good person, but don't let them dictate your actions. It's very important. Or thoughts. You do whatever the f- you want to do. Next, never ask her how many men she's been with. Asking her how many men she's been with is needy and try hard. We were watching Suits yesterday, two days ago, and Mike was asking Rachel how her relationship with Logan was. And in particular, he asked one, did you love him and who ended it? Why would you even ask that? Did you really love him? You're a pathetic little Mike. And she asked him and he asked her, what was that? So like, yeah, who ended it? Who cares? You come across as so needy and try hard. You don't even know how much inner you have left inside of you. It's not good for you or for her. What purpose does it serve? And I made that mistake as well. In the beginning when I started learning this, if you remember my story a little bit or if you've watched my story, there's a video here on my YouTube channel where in a seminar I talk about my story a little bit. I had a mentor back in the day when I was still married with my ex-wife or like right after I ended. I found the mentor beforehand and then I started putting his advice into practice after I ended the marriage with my ex-wife. I started going out. And in the beginning, I made all of the mistakes you can possibly make. I was seeing a girl for a short period of time and asked her, so how many guys have you been with? And she was like, that's such a weird question. And there's no, and then my mentor told me afterwards, there's no possible good outcome that could arise from a question like that. Either she'll lie to you, well, what are you gonna do with that? Or you'll get an answer you won't like. Or at the very least, even if it's an answer you like and it's honest, you still come across like a needy little because why the would you even care about other men? It doesn't matter what happened before me. Now, that is not to say that you shouldn't care about body count. Absolutely, you can use that as a proxy for future behavior. Or that in and of itself can just be something that you care about. Some people care about that. Some people don't care about that. That's completely up to you. But asking her on the first date is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you want to entertain the idea of going into a relationship with her, you can absolutely ask that question in the first two to three months of dating. But let two months go by and just don't talk about other men at all. You should be so full of yourself in a good sense that your cup runneth over, that you have no mental space to even entertain other men. Now, you can absolutely talk about friends of yours and mention them, but she wants to get to know you. Very important. Next, never sit in front of her, only next to her. Now, can you sit in front of her on a date? Of course. You can put me in almost any scenario and it'll be absolutely brilliant in a dating context. But it is much easier to build physicality in a respectful way when you're sitting next to her. Very difficult to touch her shoulder with the back of your hands. Always respectful. She doesn't want anything. If she doesn't want that contact, you leave her alone immediately. And again, these are best practices. There are certain what if scenarios where you can't really sit next to each other. But more often than not, it's your lack of leadership, your lack of confidence that leads to you not being able to sit next to her. Yeah, but we were in a restaurant. Pull the chair around or premeditate the situation. Go to a bar that is close to your place on a couch where there's couches or booths where you can sit next to each other. Put a little bit of thought into it. Very important. Next, never be too agreeable. Very important. 
absolutely agree when you feel like agreeing. Some people take this a little bit far. Remember, I'm not a pickup artist. Some pickup artists con consider everything to be a frame battle. Oh, I can never laugh about her joke because that means I'm weak. Absolutely not. If Fernanda tells me a joke, I laugh wholeheartedly. If women tell you a joke and you think it's funny, laugh. If you agree, agree. If she says something great, boom, give her a fist bump. That's actually really cool. Nice. And you validate what she said and you give her and you agree as enthusiastically as you'd like. But equally enthusiastically disagree if you feel like she's talking You're like, no, I absolutely disagree. Or just tease her. That's complete nonsense. Or like, what the are you talking about? Playful, not disrespectful. Teasy, playful, but absolutely disagree. Now, there's a nuance to all of this. You don't want to have logical disagreements on a date. You don't want to have an argument with her on a date. Very important. I had a client. <laughs> he was, we had a call with uh, the clients a couple of weeks ago. And he says he got into an argument, a verbal argument on a date with a lady about Kanye. Whether Kanye this, Kanye that. Why would you sacrifice the harmony on the date because of a disagreement you have about Kanye's clothing or not clothing? That's ridiculous. If you have a disagreement, let it be around core values. Now, it's absolutely important that you are willing to sacrifice short-term harmony for long-term peace. Most men are too afraid to step into conflict. Obviously, you've got to be able to have conflict if it's necessary. But most of the time, it's just not necessary. Just be easygoing. Now, if she says something that isn't cool, for example, she takes something from your plate without asking, like, hey, next time ask, please. Or if you think it's cute, then just let her do it, right? But it, it depends, right? The devil is in the detail and you'll have to be socially calibrated. But if she does something that absolutely crosses your line, let her know, like, hey, please don't do that. And then you dip into seriousness for a moment. And then when you get out of the seriousness, you immediately have to go back to positivity. And that's what a lot of men can't do. They either get very, very serious and stay there or they're only positive. They're not able to go from fun, positive and lighthearted to serious setting a boundary. Say, like, please don't ever do that again. Oh, no, I absolutely disagree. Boom, back to positivity, final at heart. So anyway, keep telling me. You were saying, blah, 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 blah. X, Y, Z, your trip to the south of Spain was... No, and then you go back to fun and positivity. You go back to creating a man-to-woman connection. You gotta be able to switch, and your nervous system is absolutely capable of doing that. Next, never avoid eye contact. Next, never tease her for something she can't change. If you tease her, only tease her for something she can change, not for something she can't change. Otherwise, you risk offending her. Because as much as you're supposed to tease her and be playful, you don't want to offend people unnecessarily. Next. Well, the counter argument to that is you absolutely have to be willing to offend people. So for example, okay, well, this would be more appropriate for a... I was about to share some of my privately held convictions, but that's probably more appropriate for a one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation. Just apply for a free initial consultation call, and uh, either you and I or you and my team, we can have a personal conversation about that. In the coaching program with the clients, I'm a lot more raw, I'm a lot more honest, because obviously in a private group like that, or even in a one-on-one -on -one context with some of the one-on-one -on -one clients, you can share things in a way more raw and honest fashion. But it's perfectly fine to express dislike for things that don't align with your core values. If you have certain political beliefs that are absolutely dear to your heart, feel free to playfully express distaste for the opposite and see what kind of a reaction it creates. I always say most men communicate like lukewarm water. You have to be like Moses part in the Red Sea, where you express strong opinions, where you express strong opinions with an utter willingness to lose her. It shouldn't matter to you whether she agrees or not. That being said, you equally don't want to unnecessarily offend people and you want to be calibrated. You want to learn how to use push-pull to get people to like you while still simultaneously expressing strong opinions. Because it's much better to be somebody who's a little bit more rough around the edges, but she knows she can trust you. You know that with other men. 
maybe if you work in a professional environment, there's some colleagues of yours or past colleagues or people you've met who are always fun and cheerful when they're having a couple of drinks, but the next morning they don't pretend, they pretend to not know you anymore. Or they are fun and nice and friendly, but you don't trust them for sh It's much better to be a little bit more rough around the edges and be a little, mm. but for people to know they can actually trust you because your word means something. And trust me, women feel that. We all make mistakes, but Jordan Peterson says we are supposed to be as accurate with our language as possible. Don't inflate shit. Don't make shit up. People feel that if you speak the truth, not always, but almost always, and you're really trying your best to be as honest and as accurate with your speech as possible, that adds a degree of strength and certainty to your character that people can't help but notice. And it'll give her a whole lot of faith into your ability to lead a family. Next, never be negative. The first date should always be positive. Next, never act like a friend. Remember, the friend zone is only ever an offer. She can offer the frame of the friend zone and then you decide whether you accept it or not. I never get friend zoned. It's absolutely impossible for me or my clients to get friend zoned. Same is true for you. You can just make the decision to not get friend zoned. Now, you may very well get rejected and the relationship ends there, but at least it's honest. These men who are having friendships with women, who are just waiting for an opportunity to strike like a snake and to confess their real feelings. Stop being a weasel. Communicate your intentions openly and honestly. Women think actually men just want to be friends. Women think men actually just want to be friends with them, which is absolutely ridiculous. 99.9% .9 of men don't want that. Are there some friendships between men and women that are real? Absolutely. But let's face it, you will never have the same friendship with a woman that you would have with a man. And if you think that, you're lost. I'm not saying you can't have female friends. Of course you can, absolutely. But you will never have the same type of friendship with a woman that you would have with a man. So. Instead of going around and befriending women, communicate your intentions clearly. And there's a million ways, a million strategies, not a million, accuracy of speech. There's a lot of strategies, a lot of techniques to do that. If you want to learn them in detail, apply for a free initial consultation call with the link underneath this video. Next, never apologize for something you didn't do wrong. Never apologize for something you didn't do wrong. If you did something wrong, be quick to apologize because People, men or women, who did something wrong and they just can't apologize, they're a pain in the ass, aren't they? So you want to be very quick to apologize if you did something wrong. But if you did nothing wrong, don't apologize. And if you're somebody who apologizes quickly, maybe even for things you didn't do right, maybe even for things you didn't do wrong, then you will feel an inner urge to apologize. But as always, you become aware of that sensation you let it arise in the space of awareness, or as Jack Kornfield calls it, loving awareness, and then you decide whether you want to give into that or not. If you did something, and if you don't know whether you did something right or not, whether you may have actually mistreated somebody and say, I'm gonna have to think about that. Give me a day or two, please. I need to reflect on this. And then you think about it. But don't be so quick to apologize if you did nothing wrong. Next. Never not offer her the kiss on the first date. Always kiss her on the first date. Now the kiss is only ever an offer. She gets to decide whether she wants to take you up on that or not. But Fernandinha, maybe put the camera on Fernanda for a second. Should a guy kiss a girl on the first date? Yes. Why? You should at least try it. Yeah, because if he, if he doesn't do that, what does it mean? I think he doesn't like you. Yeah, he thinks he doesn't like you. You're gonna think he's a right? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> use that word. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens. Offer the kiss after an hour and a half. Obviously build physicality respectfully, escalate verbally and physically, very respectfully, very gradually, but then go for the kiss. Another reason you should go for the kiss, by the way, is it fosters emotional investment. If you think you're the only one she's going on a date with, you're delusional. Even an average looking woman still has 500 to 1,000 likes on an app like Tinder. Let that sink in. 
So you only have a very short period of time before she'll be taken off the dating market. Next. Never not text her after the date. You have to send her a text after the first date. Not too much, but simply say, it was fun hanging out with you, hope you get home safe. She says, cool, thanks. And then you, the next message immediately is, let's meet for dinner at my place one of these days. Let's cook something at my place one of these days. Let's do drinks one of these days, depending on how the date went, depending on the details of the situation. Put these 18 things into practice and your life will be a lot better. Now, if you want me to help you personally, find the right girlfriend, life partner, or wife, what are they supposed to do, babe? Apply right now. For what? A free consultation. Con <laughs> consultation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apply for a free initial consultation call. I'm looking forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.